mic number one, we will be able to preach today. Amen. If you, how many of you have a program today? You got a program? Amen. Somebody said I got a program slash fan right now. <laughs> Amen. We cut the AC down. I guess we can try to cut it down even a little bit more. Amen. I put it down. Uh, 67. We'll cut it down some more. If you're Deacon Woods, you can go adjust the temperature for us. Amen. If you have your program, the program says it is our vision to be a church full of soul winners and disciples of Jesus Christ. A church where the depressed, discouraged, unfulfilled, and the confused can find acceptance, love, help, hope, forgiveness, truth, and in what? Encouragement. Amen. It is our vision to be a church uh, that will reach out and that's not out of reach. We want to go out in the community. We want to reach others. We want you to reach others. You know, most of the people who come to our churches, they come by word of mouth. They come because somebody referred them, because people trust your word. And so if we be evangelists and we be open to witnessing to someone and letting them know about our church, our church will be filled. Amen. I echo the sentiments of my wife as she said, every Sunday will be family and friends day. Amen. Amen. So, so we want family and friends to come every Sunday. Amen. And so it won't be a lie if you go out there and say, this Sunday we have a family and friends day. We want you to come on out. Make it sound like it's brand new, but every Sunday will be family and friends day. Amen. Will y'all help us? Amen. Amen. This is a good, good ministry to be a part because we're getting off the ground. Amen. And when you're getting off the ground, you become some of the pillars of the ministry. You can look back and say, years, I remember when they first started and I was a part of helping to build God's church. Amen. But this is not our church, but this is the Lord's church. Amen. So everything that we do in here is for the kingdom of God. Without God, we are irrelevant. Without Jesus, we are irrelevant. I remember we went out and witnessed and one guy said, well, tell me something about the church without talking about God. I said, we can't tell you anything about the church without talking about God. Amen. But our church is made up and the foundation of our church is Christ. Amen. So what you want me to tell you? We come in fellowship and, and hug you. No, it's, it's about winning souls to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I want you, uh, you know, in our program uh, this week, I don't know if I, did you tell them? About cancel? Okay, you told me. Can Why she told me about cancel? Okay, I had stepped out for a second. Amen. And uh, so I guess we're ready to go. Amen. Uh, on the back of it, on the back of your program, if any of you have any questions about giving and saying, you know, some Sundays I don't make it, you can look at the back of it, and we have two ways that you can give. The first way is you can go to our website at regenerationtemple.org and just scroll down to the donate button and donate there. Or we also have a Givelify app. If you copy this link right here to take you right to our church, uh, Givelify, you can give on there. So we have made it accessible to anyone who wants to give at any appointed time. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, to the word of the Lord. You got your Bibles? And I, I want to also acknowledge uh, Deacon and uh, Deacon Woods and Deacon Wilcox, we thank God for the tremendous job. Can you clap your hands for them? Amen. Uh, and sometimes as leaders, you know, you have to pour out and you have to be here early and you have to do things. Because uh, see, when we get here, we have to, you know, change things around and set up everything. And so leaders have to get here early. Sometimes they don't get acknowledged in it. You know, I know them, it doesn't really matter but we acknowledge them and we appreciate them for all that you do. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to also acknowledge my wife, First Lady Washington. Amen. Amen. She is a jewel and she is the fragrance of this ministry. Yes. Uh, but I just thank God for her because my wife is one who is willing. I believe the other night I was running late for church. And uh, I asked her if she could, you know, if she wouldn't mind, you know, I had to tiptoe. I said, if you wouldn't mind, my shoes. And I know some of y'all might say, oh, Lord. But she, she messed around and shined my shoes before I went to church. She was sitting on the floor uh, shining shoes because she knew I was running late. So she was 
doing whatever she could to help me. And I thank God for giving me wisdom to make a fine selection in a wife. Amen. Amen. So I thank God for her. I had uh, I brought her flowers yesterday. She told me, what is this for? What'd you do? And I said, this is just for you being good. Amen. Just for me having a wonderful wife, amen. Sometimes you show up with flowers just because you love a person. Amen. 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 So I thank God for her and I celebrate her. I thank God for Mother Gloria, my own mother. And my son and daughter. All of you, the Lord's people. Amen. All right, to the word of the Lord. Hold on. Do, do we have any first time visitors? It's your first time. First time. Amen. Could you stand and give us your name, brother? Right, I'm my wife, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We thank God for you being here, sir. We're so glad you're here and joining us. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Joe has just been an inspiration, and uh, we thank God for her. She's been coming ever since she came. Amen. 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 So we thank God for you, sir. Welcome. Welcome to you. Uh, to the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy today. The book of Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. And when you have it, please stand. Then I don't mind if you give me an amen. To your fathers, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee. I want everybody to shout, remember. remember. Which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. And fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did, they, did thy fathers know that he might make thee known that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thy heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Mm -hmm. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. Everybody say a good land. A good land. Oh, come on, say a good land. A good land. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of the valleys and heal. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of oil and olive and honey. That sounds good, doesn't it? Amen. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Since without limit you shall eat bread. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, whose heels thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and are full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Verse 11. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God, not keeping his commandments, and his judgments, and his statutes, which I command thee this day. I want to focus your attention on verse 11 here, the A clause. He says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord 
thy God. I want to preach from this topic today. Don't forget God. Amen. Simple topic. Don't forget God. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, don't, don't forget, forget God. God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Don't forget God. If I had to pick a subtopic, I would say, Lord, I remember. Amen. Lord, I remember. Father, bless us again today. Help us to preach your word with power and authority. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I will begin by quoting David in Psalms 103 and verse 2. When he said in the NIV, he says, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. The King James Version says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I'm preaching from a topic today called Don't Forget God. If I were to pose a question to all of you today, and I would say, how many of you forget God? I'm sure I wouldn't have many. If I were to say to you, how many of you ignore God or neglect God or reject God? I'm sure I would not have a copious amount of hands. If I were to say, how many of you in here today are atheists? It means that you don't even believe in God or that you seldom ever think about God. I probably wouldn't get a lot of hands. Or if I were to ask you, are there any agnostics in here that you say there may be a God or there may not be a God? And you seldom ever think about God. I'm sure I would not get a sufficient amount of hands today. But I think that we are living in a time that even though our mouth does not articulate it, our actions are demonstrating it. Our mouth may not say I've forgotten God, but our actions say we have forgotten God. Many of us, uh, we have begun uh, to move backwards, what the Lord says, instead of moving forward in the things of God. And we forget God when we put everything before God. Somebody say amen. amen. See, when you begin to walk backwards, you must understand that you are living under the commands of your own personal Pharaoh. Come on. Pharaoh was the one who did not want to let his people go. And most of us, our flesh does not want to let us go. As a matter of fact, our flesh is our own Judas. At any moment and at every moment, it will betray us because your flesh is trying to conquer the spirit of God that is in you. That's why the Bible says that they are always at war with one another. And see, whenever we allow our flesh to override our spirit, then we are walking in darkness. Paul calls it in Ephesians chapter 2, he calls this the spirit of disobedience, that we are walking zombies, that though we are alive, we are yet dead. See, when you are living in sin, you are committing yourselves to the acts of the enemy. And instead of living, you are touching dead things. And we are hanging with dead things. And you're having dead conversations. And you're touching and hanging around people that are dead when God has called you to be alive. Don't forget God. It is great when you think about Pharaoh, because if you think about Pharaoh in the Old Testament, it is God who said, I have heard the cries of my people. And I came to deliver. I came to bring you out. I came to bring you into a promised land. But we must first be open and be willing to say, Lord, if you deliver me, I'm going to continue to follow and worship as you have set me to do. Yes, Tell your neighbor, don't forget God. Don't forget God. But this is how we measure. The question is today, and I want you to evaluate yourself. How much time throughout the day do you personally think about God? Can it be said that you have forgotten God? How much time throughout the day do you spend in prayer? How much time throughout the day do you spend thinking and talking with him? How much daily time do you spend reading and studying 
God's word. This is a self-evaluation. I want you to measure yourself. How much time do you spend witnessing and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ? I know you say you haven't forgotten God, but just look at those three points. How much time do you spend praying? How much time do you spend in God's word? And how much time do you spend witnessing unto God? Now, physically and mentally, we say we haven't forgotten God. But if we are not committing ourselves to those three points, then we have really forgotten God. Look at your neighbor and say, don't forget God. How can a person guard himself against forgetting God? This was the great concern of Moses as he stood preaching to the people. In Numbers chapter 22, the Israelites were camped in the plain of Moab, close to the Jordan River, right across from Jericho, in the great, the great city of Jericho. They were poised and ready to enter into the promised land, and Moses says unto them, don't miss it. He's, he, says, he says, don't miss your moment. I came to tell somebody today, you are close to what God has promised you, but God wanted me to tell you, don't miss out on this next opportunity. Don't miss out on this moment. Don't miss out on what I'm about to bring you into, because he said that your sin will cause you to miss out on the promise. Somebody say hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying, you're almost there. Spiritually, somebody in here, God said, you're almost there. Now, don't, don't miss out on this next move that I'm about to make in your life. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Moses was telling the Israelite, God has a promise for you, but if you forget God, you will never enter in the promised land. Moses had, he was preparing the people. He was warning them that you must continue to follow all of God's commandments. He was saying that he would guide you, he would protect you, that he would give you, give you the victory, that God would reward you if you just stay faithful. Come on. Moses was emphatically trying to convey one point, and that is, don't forget God. He was saying unto them, don't forget God before you enter the promise. Because if you enter it, then I'll leave you because you'll forget me and then I have to forget you because I can only draw near to them that can draw near to me. So Moses is saying, even though we're about to go in here, don't forget God. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, don't forget God. Don't forget God. Today, I'm going to talk about three points. And I want you to write, write them down for those of you that are writing. The three points are obey God's every command. Number two is remember the wilderness wanderings. And number three, praise the Lord for the promise. Number one, obey every command. Number two, remember the wilderness. And number three, praise the Lord for the promise. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse one, if you have your Bible. The Bible says, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do. Here's point number one, he says observe to do it. Observe in the Hebrew is shamar, which means to guard and to protect and to take heed. I'll say that again, it means to guard, to protect and to take heed. So when he says observe to do what God has instructed you to do, he says that the word of God has to be guarded inside your heart. It has to be guarded because it's the only thing that's going to give you life. It's the only thing that's going to give you joy. It's the only thing that's going to give you peace. He says guard it. That's why David said in Psalms 119 in verse 11, he says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. He says, thy word have I guarded in my heart huh, that I would not sin against God. He says, I don't want to ruin my relationship with God. Huh? I don't want to ruin what I have with God. Huh? So I got to guard, I got to protect it and write God's word on the table of my heart. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, it is, it is God's word that you have to guard. You have to protect it. Because when the enemy begins to speak to your mind, you got something down on the inside that will fight against the enemy that's warring against your mind. He says, you got to keep this stuff down on the inside and observe to do it. Because prosperity comes from you lining up with God's will. 
It's a lot of us who want God's will, but we don't want God's way. We walk in our own will and expect God's way to work out. And we say, God, have your way. God says, when will you follow my will? Somebody say hallelujah. He says, he says, obey every commandment, every word. It's amazing that God says that I've given you the word of God, but the very thing that we have trouble with studying is his word. Oh, God, look at your neighbor and say, we got to study his word. He says, if a person obeys the commandments of God, it means if his mind is set upon God, it means he's not forgetting God. He's rather he's thinking about God. It means he's seeking God on a daily basis, trying to fulfill the will of God. Because when you are concerned about the word of God, then you have no other choice but then thinking about God. Because his word is what makes you alive. His word is what gives you instructions. His word is what will take you from one place to the next place. His word is what will lead you and guide you. David said that word, he said, is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Somebody shout his word. His word. He says, is that what we should meditate on? We should fellowship with his, his word. He says, uh, communing with God is a part of communing with God's word on a daily basis. Sometimes Monday morning you wake up depressed and stressed out because they say uh, most, a lot of people die on Monday morning because that's the first day they have to go back to work again. <laughs> oh God. And sometimes you got to put some word in your heart good God, so that he can help you uh, go throughout the day and say, Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it because you know that this is God's day and I want God's will to be done. So I'm not going to work upset. I'm going with joy because I'm going to bring joy to wherever, wherever I am. Somebody say hallelujah. The word of God, it gives you the energy and the drive and it gives you that intimacy with God. You begin to gain knowledge about God. And when God's word begins to drive you, then it changes environments. When God's word drives you, it shifts the atmosphere because you are no longer following yourself, but yourself is following the spirit of God. Can I say that again? You are no longer being controlled by yourself, but you have yourself under control. See, what the issue is with most of us, we follow ourselves and we do whatever ourself wants to do. But what God said, if you're going to follow me, you got to deny yourself. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying there. If you're going to follow Jesus Christ, you got to deny yourself. Because that means you have yourself under control. The Bible says, present your body as a living sacrifice. He says, you have to put yourself under subjection. Somebody say hallelujah. In other words, we need to start driving society and our children back to the word. Because technology is driving our children to the world. Me and my wife were talking the other day and they talked about how this video game, uh, they presented unto this seven-year-old little girl uh, uh, sexual images on the video game. And, 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 I, and I'm going to try to make it PG, but it was a molestation on the video game. And, and they, had, they were unaware because these things are creeping into the mind of our children while we are still allowing our children to be, be babysat by the tablet and the cell phone and the TV. They are sneaking things in unaware and you're wondering how your children know about certain things before they should but there's something that you have allowed to come inside your house and you got to start driving them back to the word of God instead of letting technology drive them to the world somebody say hallelujah we got to drive our children back to the word of God 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Look at our generation today. We are we have become lovers of our own self. We make ourselves famous on YouTube and on videos. And we become our own stars. And we make our own videos. And he said we will become lovers of us. That's why God can't get in because we love ourselves too much. That's why God can't get in our mind because we love ourselves too much. In order to serve the kingdom of God, you have to put your, your self secondary 
can make God primary. He says, not only shall they be lovers of their own selves, but they shall be covetous, they shall be boasters, they shall be proud, they shall be blasphemers, they shall be disobedient to parents. Uh, come on, look at our kids nowadays. I had to tell two young boys yesterday, I said, man, who cut your hair? He said, what? I said, what? I said, well, don't your father teach you or your mother teach you how to say yes, sir? He said, yes, sir. I said, then I asked the other boy. I said, do they teach you how to say yes, sir? I said, okay, well, we're going to go from there. But if we don't teach our children and we don't correct our children, hallelujah, come on, we can't be afraid to correct them that are under us. He says they'll be disobedient to parents. He says they'll be unthankful and they'll be unholy. They'll be without natural affection. They'll be truth breakers. They will be false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good traitors, high-minded lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. He says they will have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. It means they will have a presentation, but no demonstration. They will have a frame, but no faith. They will have participation, but they will not have any power. He says, not only that, he tells Timothy, he says, turn away from them. He says, because they will reject the truth. He says, you have to be willing, Timothy, in the generation that you live in, not to fall into these categories. Because in the last days, in 2018, there is a big conflict between the believer and the unbeliever. And now, like never before, you will have to be judged for who will you stand for. I remember they wrote the song that says, who's on the Lord's side? And today that we live in, I want to know who's on the Lord's side. Can you open up your mouth and give God the praise if you're on the Lord's side? You're on the Lord's side. So Deuteronomy 8 and 1, again, it says, he says, command thee this day shall you observe to do that you may live. He says, you may live if you obey the commandments of God. Look at your name and say live. live. He says, not only live, but he says, you shall multiply. You shall go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. He says, these are wonderful gifts that God will give to you. The promises. He says, these are the gifts of life that God will give to you. Some of us don't understand, but the word of God will give you life. And it will cause you to prosper. It will give you success. And the very thing that we avoid is the very thing that we should have at the foundation of our faith. Sometimes we look for self-help books and videos to help us. But God says, you know what they're doing? They just take the word and they change it around and remove the name of God out of it. But if you would open what's in here, they talk about speaking things into existence. That's what the Bible says. They talk about how you should prioritize. That's what the Bible says. But we don't open it up so we spend money on secular stuff rather than reading our word. I ain't gonna get no help. The person who places his life in the hand of God, he is looked after by God. Yes, sir. The person who knows that God is his protector, his guider, his leader, God will look after him. See, the person who obeys God's word, his life is not cut short. You know, I, I, I was thinking the other day and I said there were so, so many classmates that I thought we would grow old and we would one day have a reunion and be able to talk about uh, what we went through and the journey of our life. And since I've graduated high school, I've had at least nine people that have died in their 30s before they could even reach it. I never thought about we You may not even reach the point of where you can talk about what God, uh, what God has done because when you don't have the word of God in your life, it will cut your life short. He says, Sister Wilcox, he says, you shall live if you obey the commandments of God. You shall have a good long life. But if you don't, you'll cut your life short. Why? Because of drugs, because of alcohol, because of gluttony. 
See, when you have a spiritual lifestyle, you, you will have a week where you got fasting on your menu. Because when you got fasting on your menu, you can't just overeat because what you're doing is now you're putting yourself in control of your body. And you say, on this day, I'm going to wait till 3 o'clock or 6 o'clock before I eat. Then your body knows that you are under control. But if you are giving up to every desire and temptation, then you will find yourself being controlled by your body. Amen. Paul says that we ought to not be mastered by anything. Yes. You ought to just fast sometimes just to see how far you can go for God. In the moments that you are fasting, you ought to read your word to say, Lord, I'm going to set my table back and set the food back so I can get to know you more. You will figure out that you got more time in your day if you commit it unto the Lord. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Health problems come when you don't obey the word of God. Give me all the chicken you can eat. Load my plate. Give me an extra cornbread. Somebody getting hungry right now. Greens and rice. Give it all to me. And, and, and what, what happens is you, you, you put, you, you, you make your body long for something that it should not long for. It means that you have now caused difficulty because your body is craving something. And Paul talks about the cravings of the flesh. We all have them, but every craving can be carved if you starve it to death. If you're saying that I want to stop chocolate, then I, I, can, I got to go without chocolate. I can't have it every now and again. You say you want to stop sinning? Well, you got to cut it out. You can't just keep sinning and thank God just Gonna, gonna work in you. You got to say, I'm gonna stop myself and I'm gonna ask for the power of God to help me quit what I need to quit doing. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So he says, verse 2, he says, and thou shalt remember. Notice he says here, uh, let, let me not forget this point. He says, I will cause you to live and you shall multiply. And then he says, you shall possess the land. All right. He says, once the Lord swear unto you. In other words, he's saying that if you obey God's commandment, you shall possess the promise. Everything that he has predestined in your life, you shall possess it. But it comes by taking heed to the instructions of God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. See, somebody in here, you should say, I'm still expecting a promise. Yeah. See, see, when you expect something, you got a praise, you got joy on the inside because you are expecting something great to happen. If I told you tomorrow that you were going to win a million dollars, if I told you that it was on the way, you would be praising God. If I say, give God your best praise and you'll win a million, I guarantee you probably run around the building. But God wants to see how much faith faith do you have when you can't touch what he's trying to give you? Yeah. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. In other words, he was saying that there's a lot of people that will say, Lord, Lord, that are not obedient to my commandments. One of the hardest things for us to do is obey. I told the young man who was here last week, I said, any of us can sin, and you'll, you'll learn that in school. Any of us can sin, but the question is, how many of us can? How many of us can deny ourselves? How many young people can say, no, I'm not going to go with the crowd. I'm not going to hang with everybody. How many of us that are older will say, no, I'm going to separate from them that mean me no good. Them that gossip and that, them that go to sleep. Them that know that they can't stay awake at any time. Them that know that they are doing things against the will of God. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So he says in verse 2, he says, and thou shalt remember... All the way which the Lord thy God led thee in these 40 years. Now I told you I got three points. This is point number two. Point number two says that we must remember the wilderness. How does a person guard himself against forgetting God? You must remember. Remember is God's guidance or remember God's guidance through the wilderness. Remember the sickness that God, that should have killed you. Come on. Y'all ain't going to help me. Amen. 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 Remember the accident.
accident that should have took you out of here. Come on, come on. Remember the disappointment that should have made you suicidal. Come on, come on. Remember, remember what you've been through, the trouble in your life where God should have allowed you to die. Remember the moment that God rescued you out of your own personal prison. Remember the time that you were crying out and you just needed a healing from God and God delivered. He says, the point is, is this is how you will never forget God if you remember how good God has been to you. Come on. This is how you avoid being, avoid the spirit of apathy when you remember how good God has been. Somebody say hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I remember some times in my own life when I was down and out and I remember how far God brought me, bro. That's why I'm so excited. It's nothing special about me. I just remember what he's done in my own life. This word remember in the Hebrew means the car means to mark out. It means to recognize. It means to be mindful of. I stopped on the mindful of. I said, oh God, I say sometimes I'm just mindful of how you good you've been to me. Sometimes I'm just mindful of thanking you for what you gave me. We walked in the house yesterday and it was so hot outside. I said, thank you, Jesus, for the AC. See, sometimes we don't praise God for the simple things that he's done in our life. We don't praise God for what he's given me. See, I've been some places where the cars didn't work. Now I got to thank you in my soul because every time I step in the car and it cranks up I say thank you Jesus see that's how you don't forget God you remember what he has brought you from and what he has taken you through somebody give God a praise remember means also to recount to record to reflect, to remind, to review it also has the idea of keeping or observing. Remember, everybody shout, remember. Remember, remember means, uh, it remember means to keep and to observe and to carry it out and to do it. Somebody say, do it. That's what you've been called to do. You've been called to walk worthy of the vocation from which God has called you. You've been called to perform, to do something in your life. There is a push that God is pushing you spiritually. And most of us decline the push because we say, well, that's out of my comfort. God is trying to push you and to remember what he's done for you. If you can remember Egypt, then you will appreciate him for the promised land. And that's what Moses was standing up preaching to them. He says, your fathers did come through this place. And they wandered through the promised land, but they never got to the promise because they forgot God. Amen. Mm. Wow. My Lord. Did you will Yes, sir. They were in the desert. Mm. It was dry. It was hot. Mm. It was over 100 degrees. Circumstances that were tragic. Mm. Perspiration was flowing freely down their faces. Their clothes were dripping with sweat and their eyes were burning and they were thirsting and, and life and work had become uncomfortable. They couldn't sleep because there were scorpions and there were poisonous snakes and there was dangerous animals and there were few trees and they were without resources. And Moses is saying, and he said, don't forget how God bless you. Yes, sir in the wilderness. The Bible says uh, he didn't allow their feet to swell. He, he didn't allow their clothes to be ripped. Don't forget the wonderings of your wilderness. Don't, don't forget the stuff that should have took you out of here. Don't forget the places that God has brought you from. Don't forget what God is doing in your life. Shout, don't, don't forget. They were in the desert. And the environment was suitable for death. But God calls them to live. There are some situations in your own life that was suitable for death. But God calls you to live. There were some places where you should have wanted to kill yourself. But God calls you to live. I wish I had a witness in here. There were some things that should have took you out of here. Because God kept them in the wilderness. If you don't want to forget God, you got to remember what he's brought you from. See, sometimes we get complacent. Yes, sir. And we don't appreciate the place that we are. But don't forget the 
places that God has brought you from. The elements of your own desert experience. The elements of the dry and thirsty place where you say, Lord, if you would just bring me out this time, if you would just move on my behalf, if you would just deliver me, somebody shall remember. remember. You got to remember where you were. Remember that God's, God's provision of food. Remember that God supplied your every need. Remember, remember God's discipline yes, while you were in the wilderness. Amen. Remember, remember, remember how God guides you through these places. Remember how God didn't allow them to kill you. Remember that these are the necessities of life Amen. and that God supplied every necessity that Amen. you need. Remember that God supplied every need. Amen. Somebody shout, Lord, Lord. I remember. I remember. He says, don't forget God, the Israelites. Verse 3, he says, he humbled thee. He suffered thee to hunger. He fed them with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. In other words, he was saying bread can sustain you, but bread cannot cause you to live because the bread of God will not only heal you internally, but the bread will heal you eternally. That not only will you have it inside, but you will have it for everlasting life. He says you got to know if you're going to live, you're going to live by the bread of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I got to get out of here. But he says here uh, in verse 7, I want to skip down here. He says, for the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brook and water, of fountains and depth that spring out of the valley. He says, this is how you guard yourself, number three, against forgetting God. He says, by praising the Lord for the promised land and its wonderful positions. His provisions. He says, you got to learn how to praise God for things that you can see, but you can't touch just yet. See, some of us have been given a vision by God. We've been given something, a, a vision that God wants us to fulfill. As the Israelites were over on the other side of the Jordan, they were looking at the promise which they could not touch yet. But they had to believe that eventually we won't get there. Because Moses believed as long as they had hope that he could continue to, to cheer them on and to encourage them. And there has to be hope for every one of us that what God has started in you, he will continue to perform it. I know you're going through some situations right now where you don't know how God is going to work it out. But God says if you just can have enough faith to believe me and to trust in me and to know that I am God. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says, he says to know and to praise him for the wonderful land. He says, you ought to praise me for the good land. And I want to tell somebody, you're right and you're close to the promise of God. But don't forget what God has done for you. Don't forget what God has made to happen in your life. Because if you begin to appreciate what he's done, then you will appreciate where you're going. And I wish I had somebody in here today that you know, that you know, that you know, that trouble won't last always. That you've been through your ups and you've been through your downs, but you still remember that I have a God who delivered yesterday and who will deliver today and will deliver tomorrow because I believe in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and I'm not going to give up on the promise of God. I'm not going to give up on what the Lord said in your teeth. Shout hallelujah. I'm not going to 